Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. We're into the thick of David's fall and uh, not a descent. He didn't lose the throne, he didn't lose his life. But a descent, absolutely. He definitely fell and he fell hard. Covered last time how he committed adultery with Bathsheba and then got her husband Uriah killed to cover up her pregnancy. So, of course, nothing is hidden from the Lord's eyes, and I ended the note last time, or I ended, I ended the message on the note, the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. So, we're elaborating on that a little bit today. So, um, Nathan, David's, some have speculated that he's David's court prophet. Um, I think that's a pretty decent speculation. Nathan seems to have kind of an in an inroad to speak to David, and it wasn't uncommon for kings at that time to have literally a court prophet there, a prophet that they trusted, someone that reliably heard the voice of God, and that also went into foreign cultures as well, um, non-believing uh, cultures. They don't, didn't believe in Yahweh anyway, and they had their court magicians, their court prophets, their court mediums, their court wise men, all those different names. <clears throat> and so Nathan tells David this story to try and get his attention. I'll read this story in full. It's a parable. At least as far as anyone knows. There were two, and this starts uh, midway through verse 1. I'll just start at verse 1. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb which he had bought and nourished. And he grew up together with him and with his children, and ate of his own food, and drank from his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was like a daughter to him. And a traveler came to the rich man, who refused to take from his own flock, and from his own herd, to prepare one for the wayfaring man who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. And hearing a story like that, Nathan told it, say, in essence, asking, you know, David as the king, what's your judgment under this, under this um, circumstance and under this scenario? And so David says, the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die. David counted that man as worthy of death for killing a lamb. Still quite understandable. You hear a story like that, and it's just like the word jerk doesn't begin to describe what in the world was going on there. Look to my video game videos and listen to some of the language I use there. That's a little bit closer to what describes a person who would do something like that. Still not quite there yet. I think we still need to come up with a new word or two to describe that kind of ridiculousness and that kind of jerkery. And he shall restore fourfold for the lamb because he did this thing and because he had no pity. So, not only are you going to die... Before you die, you're going to pay fourfold for that lamb. You're going to make it up to him, and then you're going to die. I'm assuming it's in that order. It'd be kind of hard to pay someone when you're dead. And then we have two. Um, we have two reactions that I think of. Beginning of verse seven, then Nathan said to David, "You are the man." And there, and he goes on to prophesy the hardship that's going to follow David. How the sword will never leave his house and how his wives will be given to one of his neighbors, and this neighbor of his will sleep with his wives in the sight of all. Well, it says specifically in the sight of this, of this son. So yeah, in the sight of all people, this guy's going to sleep with your wives. So really terrible prophecy in regards to what happened here. And there's, I'm actually going to split this chapter up into day and to tomorrow, because today I really thought of, you know, there are two reactions here. One, there's the reaction of David, you know, just hearing this horrible story, getting all riled up, and then I just imagine the color draining from his face, realizing he was talking about me. The Lord was talking about me. I'm that horrible man who killed an innocent lamb. And certainly, um, Uriah would be the poor man there in comparison to the king of Israel. So, the poor man and the lamb who was sacrificed. 
quite bad, and just the and David does end up repenting. I don't think that's a huge spoiler, a huge shock to anyone. Um, the story is fairly well known, and if you didn't know, spoiler alert, <laughs> it'll be covered tomorrow anyway, so you wouldn't have to wait long for the uh, for finding out what happened with David and what happened with Nathan. And Nathan's reaction is the next reaction I wanted to think about because if his ki if his king David had turned away from God like completely turned away and he comes up and is like hey your whole family's gonna be messed up someone's gonna sleep with your wives and you're the man who deserves death essentially the king could very easily have his head take his life it just snap of a finger the word goes from his mouth and that's the end of Nathan's life and it just it makes me want you know did Nathan have any hesitation when going up before King David, think you know, my gosh, well, what is? I know the word of the Lord to this man, but what is his reaction going to be? What are the consequences going to be to me? Being a prophet is not a uh, some glamorous, glorious position where you simply hear the words of God and pronounce judgment on all ye sinners. Um, when you're a prophet, you generally you take your life in your hand, and you go into very dark places and blast and curse the darkness with the light of God. And the darkness tends to lash out. It tends to lash back. It doesn't like being caught out on all of its bull crap. But David ended up repenting. Nathan's life was fine. He was in good shape. But yeah, just the reactions of both men. The one that has to deliver this dreadful word of the Lord to someone I'm sure he loved. and someone who he considered his friend who had fallen quite far. And then the reaction of David, you know, just getting sucker punched with this Horrible story about just some horrible rich guy. I mean, like, that guy deserves to die. And then, like, oh, I deserve to die. Well, crap. I just wonder what their reactions were at that time. But, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is supposed to be typing. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. God bless.